everybody, Garden Sound here. And Lyle the Bird. And today we're going to be talking about a hack that I figured out in Ableton. So recently I've been working on this project. I've been comparing the Behringer Model D to other synthesizers in the same price range. The goal being to determine whether or not it's worth $300. And there are some synthesizers that I wanted to test it against. For instance, the um, Zero Coast or the No Coast, as they sometimes call it. Um, the Moog Minotaur and the Moog Mother 32. I wanted to compare this synthesizer, which is slightly cheaper than all three of those. In order to do that, we wanted to compare some different things that the synthesizers do, uh, like filter sweeps, um, oscillators, and uh, like the, uh, the amplifier envelope or, or the modifier envelopes. I wanted to compare those to the other synthesizers and there's really no good way for me to communicate the settings. I could write them out in terms of percentages, like so if, if the knob is all the way open, that's 100%. If the knob is all the way closed, that'd be 0%. And if it's in the middle, that'd be 50%. And then you just kind of go from there. That's not exactly accurate. What's more accurate than that would be to take a picture of the settings as I have them on the synthesizer. But then the problem becomes project management. If I'm saving this project file in Ableton and sending it to my collaborators, I then have to have attachments and notes and stuff like that. So then I began to think about how I could include a picture inside of Live. Now, there are definitely ways that you can add text and add images to the production notes or the project file notes, which displays in the project manager on the right-hand side of the project file. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, being able to include multiple images to explain specific details about a specific track in a specific group, right? Like. How do you do that? There's, there's really no way to do that by default. However, comma, you can add movies. You can add video files in specific codecs and you can add stuff like that to a live session. And I wanna explain how to do that today. Here we go. So he here's the project file that I've been referencing. This is what I've been sending back and forth with two artists, um, George Antonios and Mr. Bill, links below. Um, and we've been going back and forth on comparing the Behringer Model D to several different synthesizers in the same price range. And in order to get the settings across for these different um, pad sounds that I'm making, because I'm the one that has the Behringer Model D, for instance, I have a pad that I created using a triangle wave. Now, the pad settings I could put in terms of percentage, like I said earlier, but it's much helpful if I just include an image. So I have. So if I press Control Alt B and then hit the play button, you can see right here that an image pops up that shows the settings of the Behringer Model D. How the hell did I get this picture in there? Well, it's not actually a picture. It's a dot, if, if, if any of you are savvy with video, it's actually dot move or dot mov or dot mov, depending on your region. Um, it, it's not a JPEG, it's not a PNG, it's not a TIFF, it is a movie file, but it's a still image. You can make a movie file with a still image in it using any simple video editing software. For this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do it in DaVinci Resolve because DaVinci Resolve is free, links below. So the manual says specifically that Live only accepts video that are recorded in QuickTime codec with the .mov or .move, depending on your region, wrapper. All right, so if you're familiar with video editing software, you'll recognize what's going on almost immediately, but for those of you who don't, let me explain. In my timeline down here, I actually have three different pictures. Um, these were taken with my cell phone and then I just transferred them to my computer. It doesn't really matter where the pictures come from as long as they're you know legible um, and at a reasonable resolution. So um, video editing timelines display the topmost first. Live doesn't, we'll get into that. Um, what you see here is the first or the topmost image, right? So layers, think about it like that. The first layer occludes the second, which occludes the third. So we're looking at the first layer topmost and you read this top down. Um, so what we've got here is this image uh, of my synthesizer. Now the question becomes, how do I get this into a movie format? Well, you drag it from this media bin Okay, when you open up Resolve, you'll drag this into just like this. I'll show you. You drag it in here, and then you just pick an arbitrary amount of time for it to be, um, you know, length of time, and then that's it. So that's how you get the picture into the software. Now the question becomes, how do we get it out of the software into a movie format that Live accepts? Bear with me. If there's multiple image files in your timeline, make sure that you deactivate the ones that you're not wanting to export right now. You have to do this one at a time. Topmost. I want to export this one. So I'm going to go to the deliver page and then I'm just going to click YouTube 720p um, because we don't need this to be high resolution. We just need this to be legible and available as a note or a liner note for our collaborators. Then what I'm going to do is pick a path for it. Right now, this is going to my downloads folder. Um, I'm going to go to the video panel right here. I'm going to select format QuickTime. That's the most important part. 
Format, QuickTime. Codec, H.264. As long as the format is QuickTime, it should import into live. These are the settings that work flawlessly with live every time. If you've got something else that works or you found something else that works, I'd like to know. Please leave me a comment down below. And that's basically all of the work you have to do on the delivery page. The next step is to click Add to Render Queue. You'll see here that it's added job number four to the render queue. I've already exported three and one and two. I'm not going to go through the export process right now because I already have, but if you were to do the next step, it's just to click start render right here, and then it'll create that file in your downloads folder or wherever you told it to export. Now the next step is getting it into live. How does that work? So I'm gonna go to my downloads folder through the browser here, but you could also do it through File Explorer. So I'm clicking the downloads folder, I see a, a file called baseline.mov or move or, or .mov. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to call it .mov from now on because that's what I prefer. Baseline.mov. And what you do is you drag it into the timeline and that's it. Now live is going to treat this as a clip. It's going to treat this as an audio track too. And you'll notice here there's actually no audio on the clip, which is true because it's just a still image that we've turned into a video. It's not really a video. It's really just a bunch of frames of the same picture. And all a video is, is frames of motion, right? So then you go, all right, cool. Where's the picture, Gardner? Good question. To bring open the video viewer, you have to press Control Alt V, which I believe is Command Option V or com Control Option V on a Mac. I'm not sure, but there is a command for it. You can also just go to the view menu up here on the top and click on video window. Okay, remember how I said that live doesn't do what every other video editing software does? Yeah, live displays the bottom most active video track at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and you, you see that the title of this window right here is baseline.mov, okay? I'm gonna go ahead, show you right here Right here under the pad section, you'll see that I've got another picture active and the clip itself is active. This is really frustrating, Ableton. This is not how video editing software works. If I click on this track and I go, okay, control alt V, I'm still looking at the baseline track. Now, even if I deactivate the baseline track, okay, the track is now deactivated. If I go back to the viewer, it's still looking at the baseline file. What you actually have to do in order to see a different clip inside of the file is deactivate the clip itself by going to deactivate clips. And now if I hit control alt V, I see the pad file because it's the bottom most active clip, not track clip. So when you're sending this to people, make sure that you let them know in order to see the different pictures that you put in here. Like for instance, I have a lead picture down here. You have to actually press zero on your keyboard to activate it or right click and activate the clip in order to see a different picture in the video viewer. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. Um, I don't often give out like just straight up tutorials like this. This is definitely the exception to the rule on my channel. But if you wanna see some more garbage, click the thumbs up button and subscribe. Otherwise, my name is Gardner and this is Lila the Bird and I'll see y'all next time.